Blessing or cursing? This is something, you know, my wife and I were having a little discussion going, what in the world is going on lately? It seems like uh, this year, and I know a lot of you are going through some tough times. You're going through things. You go, what in the world is going on? Can I even catch a break? And, you know, we all go through that. And I wanted to bring up something that I found in, in meditating on this a little bit uh, that may help out. I hope it does. It helped me out a little bit to get a little more focus, a little more clarity on what's going on. And yeah, I'm I'm preaching more to me today than anybody else, but you guys are more than welcome to ride along, right? I'm uh, again, this is one of those messages that I've been dealing with, so I'm going to share. And yeah, you know, sometimes we got a choice, sometimes we don't. It seems like we would all like to be in a position where life is just roses and you're walking around with those tiptoe through the tulip rose-colored glasses all the time, but it doesn't always happen that way. Uh, you know, things come up, and and sometimes it's something that we did. Yes, sometimes we will bring things on, uh, as, as it says in Deuteronomy 28, that if you don't do all, all these things, if you don't keep these commandments, then all these curses will follow you and it's a whole litany of curses and how many of you have ever looked at that and went wow i mean some of those things that that are in deuteronomy 28 are showing up in my life maybe not all of them but definitely there's a few things that are showing up that you're going what in the world is going on with that and you know, you got to kind of wonder sometimes. And and I've done that before, looked up and go, okay, Father, did I do something to upset you? Did I miss something? Did I misstep? And I'm saying all this to say, yeah, I've been there. Just like a lot of you are probably nodding your head right now going, yeah, uh, uh, sounds like you're preaching to the choir. So let's go ahead and look at a couple of things here. First, we got to understand the word blessing and getting back to what we were talking about last week, using some of our Bible study techniques. You got to understand the law of first use or first reference. Actually, the first time that the word blessing comes up is in uh, Genesis 122. And we'll look at that a little bit too. But here's here's something in, in this case. I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you. Now, I like that that's the ESV uh, translation of this verse. Whoever dishonors you, I will curse. Blessing and cursing is a back and forth thing we're going to see in a minute. Strong's 1288, Barak or Baruch as in Baruch Atah, Adonai Eleinu Melech HaOlam, you know, the, the standard blessing that we say. The definition means to kneel. Curiously enough, when I looked that up, I said, wait a minute, to kneel? What does that got to do with what I understand being blessed or being a blessing to others? What does that have to do with it? So, to kneel by implication to bless God as an act of adoration. So now we see that actually the word blessing, when we come into this, is much the same with that curious little word to obey. Or I'm vapor locking here real quick, folks. My mind's going so many different ways. Uh, when we talk about Yom Kippur, and it talks about uh, if you will not, uh, um, doggone it, if you will not abase yourself, you know, afflict. There we go. Thank you, Father. Wow. I, I just vapor locked. Crazy. To afflict yourself. Sorry about that. 
And the root word there is actually to humble. And we looked at that last week, to, to come into a place of humility. And it's not that you've got to fast and do the other things. So in this implication here with the word bless, it means that we're doing something on our part and when you think about it now in the context of Genesis 12, 3, I will bless those who bless you and to him who dishonors, I will curse. I will bless those. I will, I will bring them into a humble relationship. Could we say that? Blessing is a form of worship, actually. And vice versa it says down here man is a benefit also by euphemism to curse god or the king is treason so what they're actually doing when they curse us they're cursing god they're not honoring the father they're not kneeling before the king if you will they're not showing the respect, the humiliation that needs to go on. And there is no blessing, and that lack of blessing is actually a curse. And let's go on. So what is it to be blessed? The root word is denial. In the Greek, if you look in the New Testament, we'll go over a few scriptures there. Happy, fortunate, blessed. It's a little different meaning than we get in the, the Hebrew. And it's a little different use in the New Testament. So then we could say by, by extension, blessing starts with us in a humble position. And we're going to bear that out here. Deuteronomy 8, every commandment that I am commanding you to do this day to be careful to do so that you may live and multiply and go into the and possess the land which the Lord swore to give your fathers. You shall remember always all the ways which the Lord God led you these 40 years in the wilderness so that he might humble you to test you to know what's in your heart, in your mind, whether you would keep his commandments or no. See, that's the thing that sometimes we come up against these. And, and again, as we were talking earlier, my wife and I, that we must be right up against a pretty good blessing. Something's coming our way. Something is here. Either we're, we're being tested to make sure that we're ready to move on to the next phase, to the next because God does not want to spoil us by showering us with all these things. How many of you know that that uh, spoiled kids are a problem? Spoiled kids can be a problem. They'll throw temper tantrums when they don't get their way. I mean, it's, it's simple. Uh, you get these dopamine fixes in your brain, and your brain throws a hissy fit when it doesn't get its shot of dopamine. God knows that he made us and that's a very important part of our life. But when we just get what we want all the time and life is real easy, we never learn and we get complacent. And then we start to expect certain things without keeping up our end of the bargain. And that can be problematic. So he wants to, and I know I've used this verse several times, but for the new folks that might be seeing this for the first time, bear with me, that he might humble you to test you to know what's in your heart and mind, whether you'd keep his commandments. There it is, the blessing. You're going to kneel. You're going to humble yourself, and you're going to do his way, his commands, instead of your own. He humbled you, verse 3, and allowed you to be hungry and fed you with manna. But first, you had to be hungry. He didn't take them up and say, okay, tomorrow I know that most of you are out of whatever you brought out of Egypt. Here's, I'm going to start giving you manna. 
He didn't do that. He didn't give them a heads up. He didn't go through all the things that were there. He let them get hungry for a little while to test them. He, he humbled you and allowed you to be hungry and fed with your with manna, a substance which you did not know, nor your fathers know, so that he might make you understand by personal experience that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. We've heard that before. That's been widely used with Bible uh, narratives through the different uh, uh, scriptures that we've got. And we've used it, preachers have used it. Even Yeshua himself says, man does not live by bread alone. When he was tempted there, the devil come up and got him. He said, hey, you're hungry. You've been fasting for a while. Why don't you turn these stones into bread? Even Yeshua was tested. You've got to understand that. That's a huge point. Why was Yeshua tested? and humbled. Yeshua had to, even though he was God, even though he knew that his father and, and him were one, he knew his position, yet he was also tested. That's a pretty key point. You know, you think if, if he's going to be tested, where does that leave the rest of us? Sure, we're going to have our moments to go through. And just like Job, naked I come into this world, naked I'm going out, blessed be the name of the Lord. And that's got to be our thing. If we're crying and moaning and we're, we're saying, God, what's going on? Things aren't working out. You know, I had an instant here the other day where we've got a kind of, uh, we've got a wheat crop that's just not where it should be. Now, on one hand, I can throw up my hands and say, oh, man, this is terrible. We're going to lose all this work, all this money, everything else. The other side says, you know what, Father, you know what's best. Perhaps wheat was not the crop we needed to plant this year. Maybe by switching to soybeans or corn on that, we will have a better position come harvest than what we would have if, because we don't know the future, right, guys? Now, we could say, well, but you should pray on it and, and it'll get all better and just leave it go and see what happens. And sometimes that works. Most of the time, it don't. You've got to open up and say, all right, something's going on. We don't know what it is. But I praise you, Father, for giving us the ability and the knowledge. To tell us which way we should go. Humble yourself to ask the Father for wisdom. Sometimes it comes right away, and other times um, you've got to search for it. And that's what we're doing here. How many times did these folks go through the wilderness in that 40 years? They were constantly being tested. They were hungry one minute. Then they were thirsty. He didn't just bring them up and say, oh, by the way, go ahead and get a drink because you're going to be thirsty tomorrow. No, he waited until they were really thirsty. In fact, they thought they were going to die of thirst in the wilderness, right? How many of you have been up to that edge and is going, uh, Father, Dad, uh, we got a problem here. I'm at the end of thing I can do. How many times in scriptures has God's people, look at the little widow woman. She came up, she, her husband, now get this, her husband was one of the prophets in the school of prophets that the prophet at that time, Elijah, was running, right? And this little gal, her husband passed, and they were down to their last little bit, I mean, when he asks, says, what have you got? Go make me a cake. And she said, I've got a handful of meal and a dab of oil. I was going to make one cake before my son and I die. 
You think her back was up against the wall? Sure it was. But then the Lord spoke through the prophet and said, bless me first. Take care of my need. Bless the Lord. Get your eyes off of your problem and go to go to someone else's situation and I'll take care of you. And that's exactly what happened. They made it and guess what? She had plenty. She sustained throughout the entire thing. You know, the cruises of oil that in a in an example where they just kept coming. She couldn't find enough containers. It kept coming when she ran out of containers, then it stopped. And that sustained them. How many times do we get up there to that point? And that's the breaking point. That's the crushing point. Just like Job, just like that little widow woman, just like Yeshua said, man, Father, if there's any way out of this, I don't like where I'm at. I don't like the way this thing's going. If there is any way possible, show me another way out. But if not, he humbled himself. He blessed the Lord, said, not my will, but yours. Now here to continue in Deuteronomy 8, your clothes did not wear out, nor did your feet swell these 40 years. Therefore, know in your heart, be fully cognizant, and this is the Amplified Translation, that the Lord your God disciplines and instructs you just as man disciplines and instructs his son. Yeah, we. there's times we're going to come up to testing. There's times we're going to come up to some hard things. But what is our attitude as we're going through them? Therefore, you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk. That is to live each and every day in his ways and fear and worship him with awful reference and profound respect. For the Lord your God is bringing you to a good land, a land of brooks, of water, of fountains and springs. Now notice, God didn't tell them this after they got there and looked around and said, wow, this is a pretty good place. Wow, it really is flowing with milk and honey. He's telling them before they get over there, right? And everything that's going through now, now look at verse 10. When you have eaten and are satisfied, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. How do we bless the Lord? We don't just say, blessed be you. That's hollow. The blessing that the Father is looking for is the kneel, the humbling the always being cognizant that it is only by him that we live and die. Deuteronomy 28, Now it shall be if you are diligent to listen and obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments which I am commanding you this day, the Lord your God will set you above the nation of the earth all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you if you pay attention to the voice of the Lord your God. There it is. The blessings are connected with the kneeling. It's all part of it. And I never really paid attention to that before till I dug into the root meaning of the word. The Sermon on the Mount. Now, I said we'd get into the Hebrew aspect of it. Now, here, the Amplified Version does a pretty good job. And all of these, now, when we go through and read in the King James Bible, uh, it says, blessed are the poor in spirit. And that's all it says. In the Amplified, it pulls this up a little bit better, and it gives you an expanded uh, understanding of what each of these, and each of these are a little bit different. Let's look at them. Blessed, spiritually prosperous, happy to be admired. 
are the poor in spirit. Blessed, forgiven, refreshed by God's grace are those who mourn over their sins and repent. Talk about kneeling. Blessed, inwardly peaceful, spiritually secure, worthy of respect are the gentle, kind-hearted, the sweet-spirited. They will inherit the earth. Love it. Blessed, joyful, nourished by God's goodness are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed, content, sheltered by God's promises are the merciful. Sheltered by God's promises, connected with mercy. That's interesting. Blessed, anticipating God's presence spiritually mature are the pure in heart. And I think that should add a comma between it. Anticipating God's presence and spiritually mature. That makes a little more sense. Are the pure in heart, those with integrity. Blessed, spiritually calm with life joy in God's favor. So you see all these nuances for being blessed but they all come back to the root of humbling. Blessed, comforted by inner peace and God's love. Blessed, morally courageous and spiritually alive with life joy in God's goodness. Boy, they, they wrote a book on that one. When people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of things against you, getting back to the intent I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who dishonor you. I will dishonor those who dishonor you is what he's saying. God will humble them in a different manner. Interesting. So let's get back. Like I said, it's going to be short and sweet. So the takeaway on this is, number one, don't be discouraged if you're running into hard times. And I know some of you have been in a, a cycle of hard times for a while. I remember one sister saying, I just want God to throw me a bone. You know, just give me some hope. Give me something to go on. And, you know, I think back about that and some different different folks that I've known over the years that it took a while sometimes for that to mature, for that to come through. And, yeah, we've all went through some hard times. And, and I know a lot of you that are on the call now and, and personally some of the struggles you're going through to say you're not alone. We're all going through different things, but it's the way that we can come together and say, blessed be the name of Jehovah. Whether we, whether we live or die, whether we make it through and how we make it through, we have to keep working on ourselves to make sure we're the best version of ourselves, to share ourselves, our lives, and be a blessing to someone else. Be a blessing to God, the Father, and to others that are around us. I don't know when your breakthrough is going to come. I don't know what form your breakthrough is going to come in. I don't know what form or anything a uh, timing in my life but i do know it will come when the father absolutely says now's the time how long did job sit there with those knothead friends of his and then went through all of that stuff we we don't know that could have been we know it's more than just a few days let's put it that way it was a while 
And then when you think about it, when the breakthrough come, when Job and the father really had that one-on-one, -on -one, how long did it take for Job? I mean, God didn't just boo, blow a, blow that blessing right up on him. It took a while to build and to regain and to, to get Job to where he honestly felt like things have turned around. You know, he had the the good fortune of being able to converse directly. He had direct contact with the Father. Something that we do, but our our means of communication isn't like the get the Father on a Zoom and he's talking to us and we're taking notes and, okay, yep, yep, got it. I need to do this, 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 and this. Just not that easy. Unfortunately, that would that would be fantastic if we could do that. Turn, tune into the Zoom at five o'clock. God's going to give you all your answers and uh, be prepared to take notes. But it doesn't work that way. Now, for some of you, that might be disappointing. I know I just, it would be easy. But that's not the way it works with the Father. We've got to keep there. We've got to keep pushing. We've got to keep our faith built up. And then we'll get there. So let's go ahead and pray and be dismissed. Uh, for those of you that want to watch this again and dig through, I encourage you to start digging into that word. Do a do a, a word search, a study on blessing and curses, and you'll find out some interesting thing what happens uh, in our lives as believers. Father, I thank you and praise you for everything that you've given. Father, be with us. Father, come into our lives and run our lives the way you would have us, the way you would see fit. And Father, I praise you for every blessing every abundant act that you've poured out into our lives. And I thank you for it. Father, continue to heal. Continue to work in our lives that we may be the men and women that honor you. And I thank you for it, Father. Now, for those who need a touch, Father God, in the name of Yeshua, reach down, heal, touch, and bless everyone in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. All right, folks, thank you. Again, I promise short and sweet, and there it is. Shalom until next week.